Hey people, Salmon Hawk here for Smonica Lodge. So I'm sitting on my boat, the one I'm building to do environmental work, and listening to different, you know, podcasts, news platforms, and so on about climate change, the environment, and so on. And the one thing that I don't hear is a complete thought. I almost never do when it comes to these news platforms podcasts and other YouTube channels, they'll probably give you more of a complete thought, but everybody's got their twist on things, you know. When I built this boat, I'm still building it, I wanted to be as green as possible, at least carbon footprint and so on, but there's a balance with that that I have to deal with. You know, because I'm not burning fossil fuels, I rely on ores and sails and people to help me with the ores and sails. I'm not going to go as fast and as far as a boat that burns, you know, 30 gallons an hour per engine. And I've had one of those boats. Expensive. That was 30 years ago. So, but the fact is that I built this boat out of wood and fiberglass. You know, epoxy, not polyester. Because it's stronger and it's not as toxic, you know, I don't think, at least when it's cured. But the fact is that trees were cut down, fossil fuels, electricity were burned and used to be able to go ahead and make the plywood, for instance, to mill the lumber and so on. But for the fiberglass itself, for all the plastics, the nylon rope, a lot of the components for the electronics were all petroleum products. Now they like to call petroleum products the fossil fuels. Well, that, that's a nice term that was, I forgot who coined that term many, many years ago. It was like, well, we're going to run out of it, you know, you know, but no, the fact is we're still making it. You know, it's just like, you know, it, it takes a while. Yeah, it is basically dead dinosaurs and, and so on, but uh, it's still being made. Natural gas is still being made. Methane is still being made. That's why when you go to a landfill, you see that periodic chimneys with flames on it because it's, it's created through the decomposition. You know, you get it under the ice of ponds and lakes. So these things are natural occurring phenomena. Now using them and burning that and releasing that carbon, that can be a problem. But when they say there's too much carbon dioxide out there, it's carbon dioxide, I believe, if my uh, chemistry serves me right still from high school, it's about three or four percent of the atmosphere. You know, anytime we have major uh, climate change, it was usually because of an asteroid or comets that came too close or some kind of an impact, you know, that came from outside of our solar system or even maybe within. As a matter of fact, if you check out Joe Rogan, Joe Rogan's episode 606, it's three, you get an amazing rundown of environmental changes through, our, uh, through the Earth's history. And we've only been here a little bit. now. We've had a big impact, no doubt. But is it the plastic that's bad? Is it the petroleum? Here, honestly, crude oil is organic. It goes back into the earth. That doesn't mean you want an oil spill. Of course not, because it takes a while to go back into the earth and so on. But when I look around, when I'm doing these ocean reef cleanups, those aren't the things that I'm seeing. I'm seeing the product of lazy humans careless humans. It's not the Coke can that's bad, although I'm definitely not a fan of aluminum. It's made from a very poisonous or called bauxite, and I don't cook on it and use it as less as possible. But the fact is it's there and it's part of our life, and people throw it away. Whatever you discard that you see blowing down the field rolling down the road, going down the curb and the sidewalk, eventually ends up in our waterways, unless it's buried or ends up in a hole or so. But just all that trash you see around the reef and the beach, it was taken there by some means. It was created and taken there. And then we have the Gulf Stream. You know, places like Great, you know, British Isles, they get all of our trash because they, the, the currents run clockwise you know, at least in the northern hemisphere. And it just keeps recycling the same trash. And now we're getting these, you know, plastic gyres that just sit there, and microplastics. People say, we have biodegradable plastic. No, you don't. You have plastics that breaks down. 
but then it becomes this gum on top of the, next to the surface of the water that prevents photosynthesis and uh, manufacturing of oxygen and so on. So it's really about the people. It's, what I really see more than anything else is the product of lazy humans. You know, when I visit Europe, especially in Germany, man, they got a, a bin for everything, but they also have a tax for everything too. You know, and they're really good. Even your garbage, your food garbage, it will go into some kind of a composting, recycling system. But again, that gets paid for by somebody, usually the people, right? If we really want to do anything that's a complete thought about the environment, we, the people, have to be more aware, uh, more proactive. Here, I use a lot of chemicals here. You know, uh, again, a, a lot of synthetics, synthetics to put this boat together. And I have to do that to preserve the wood that's on it. It's not marine grade, marine grade wood, marine grade plywood. It's exterior grade. And when I balance out the prices of the actual marine grade wood, that I still had to cover with epoxy. I was still ahead of the game and cheaper by doing this. But when it comes to things like disposable brushes, the handles get cut off. The epoxy, the, the bristles that get hard, they can't be reused. It would cost me more and it would take more t other chemicals to clean that brush. So the handle comes off, it's repurposed for something else, kindling, I have a wood stove in here and it gets stacked up with that. But that takes time and energy to do that. It takes concentrated thought to do that. So a lot of the wood in here has been repurposed three, four times that eventually the, what's left over becomes a cart that ends up pushing this boat out of the barn and then can go back into a fireplace to heat and so on. You know, when it comes into heating and things like that, in the 20th century, a lot of the forests really grew. They flourished. One of the biggest reasons why is because people were burning coal. Didn't need to go down, chop another tree, wait another year for it to be suitable to burn because you have to let that tree sit a while. It would say, say get seasoned. Otherwise, the, the moisture and the, the other things that go up in there can cause a chimney fire. You want clean, dry wood. And that would put up a lot of, uh, again, more releasing carbons. But then we have that one political side that likes to have that thing, it's all, all these systems are bad, we need to burn it all down. And then when they're creating these kind of mostly peaceful demonstrations, we see lots and lots of flames. They're burning things like polypropylene. Here, a fireman told me, you burn something like this, this plastic little bench, you know, that releases some of the most toxic stuff into the atmosphere. It's going to kill off a lot of the uh, natural habitats. Insects, birds, if they get too close to it, cause birth defects, and so on. And then, when the firemen come in there to use the chemicals and fire retardants to be able to put out these fires from these mostly peaceful demonstrations, you know, all that runs down the street into the storm drains and back out into the waterways to create more damage. It's just doing that on and on and on, you know. There's no quick way to solve any problem, people. It needs a complete thought. It needs a complete plan. And then consistency and discipline to go along with that plan. And then, yeah, we can go ahead and get along with it. But then at the same time as we're working around cleaning our local environment up, I mean, you know, think globally, act locally, right? Then how many military campaigns are we in? We just left Afghanistan in a hurry why? Oh, so we could jump into another one. Can't tell me they didn't see that coming. I was in the Marine Corps for a while. You know, it's toxic. You know, defense system is toxic. Just about every vehicle that I was in, you know, I was a combat vehicle operator, and everything had an EPA uh, exempt sticker on it. You know, these engines are designed, anything it could possibly make, any combustion or flame at all, you can throw it into the fuel tank and this machine will work off of it somehow. And that's what it's for. The crudest form of generating power and transport. And everything in the military is designed for two things, to kill people and destroy things, period. And 
all that, when it goes boom, all that toxic stuff goes into the environment. <clears throat> we won't even <clears throat> we won't even get into the nuclear part, right? One of the biggest things that we could do anything is push the government to stop this rampant warfare. That is a huge polluter. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, <clears throat> yeah, sawdust, not COVID. So people, when it comes down to the environmental stuff, you know, we have to check ourselves. And like I said, so I'm using these chemicals, a lot of denatured alcohol, mineral spirits, uh, linseed oil, I'm just kind of looking around, different resins, um, that's about it. Caulking, you know, but I try to dispose of it in the most green way, appropriate way, whatever they design, the legally way. You know, we burn lots of cardboard and paper here. We don't have a recycling program. The regular trash service sucks here out in rural central Texas. So you do what you can, but we do what we can. So like in the mineral spirits, for instance, we're using oil-based paints. I can clean my brush and put that aside, this uh, coffee can that I cleaned it in aside. The next day, I'll be able to pour some of the top of it off into another one. So it starts to not really distill, but the sediment comes to the bottom. And finally, after about three containers in about a week, I can use that same mineral spirits over again to back in the clean. So I do that, A, it's, it's a cost thing, and life cost, resources cost thing. At the same time, I don't have to keep worrying about disposing about mineral, uh, mineral spirits. But there's always going to be some kind of toxic waste in industrialized life, period. When I cook, I cook with the, uh, either the propane or with an open fire. And I try to cook enough to where it lasts and I don't have to cook again for a while. I do my part the best I can. But then I look out, you know, everybody likes to go to Starbucks. they got nice coffee. Lots and lots of trash comes out that door in the back. You know, all kinds of stuff. And if the person's not paying attention, it blows down the street and eventually ends up in the, in the waterway. You know, we have to look at the whole picture, people. I mean, you have to set your, what, ask yourself, when you don't like what's going on in the environment, ask yourself, what am I doing? Okay? So this boat, in case you guys haven't seen it, you know, I'll just turn it around. It's my sleeping area. I can't see what you see, but I'll just kind of pan it out. Three years I've been on this, just me, okay? Storage under there, but see all the plastic? I dispose of it the best I can. And I have to use my resins and varnish and paints to preserve it to go out and probably pick up a lot more trash that people just carelessly dump out there. Do dolphin, whale, rescue, and, and whatever I can with whoever I can. I build it open to hold more divers and so on. All that diving equipment, aluminum tanks, plastic and plastic and rubber, and, but all that stuff has to be disposed of properly when it's reached its time because the sun destroys all synthetics and it breaks it down. So, you know, and I'm okay with sewing canvas sails and using them as long as I can. I know that that's it. So I created my parameters of operation and said I will operate within these limitations. You know, I know I won't be able to do as much as I want to do, but I can do something, and I can do it the cleanest and the greenest that I can. And that's that. Give it a complete thought, people. Leave a comment, you know. Your comments are important to creators. It is, content creators. Your, your comments can often give us a point that we just don't think about. You know, it's just like, oh yeah, good point. You know, I haven't thought about that in a while. And, you know, help out any way you can you know so by the way paypal is shaman hawk you want to contribute to my green efforts to help with the environment on this boat called ima and stay tuned push the like button subscribe share videos and so on and says let's do this together you know maybe i know a lot of people are working really hard all the time just trying to get by but small donations we give you the videos you give us suggestions you can point out different areas to say, hey, we have a problem over here. I'll be going from Central Texas to
to southeast Florida for my first maiden voyage of about 3,000 miles. And from there, I'm open to going to all kinds of areas and doing whatever needs to be done. So, you know, leave comments. Keep in touch. Catch you guys later.